definition. So we are on mantra nine. Yes, uh, we had uh, begun our discussion and uh, found that uh, we still have a little more to go. Uh, in fact, the last two uh, lines of this mantra. Page number, Page number 80. I'll read the translation. Day two, that is God and the individual soul are both <clears throat> birthless in the sense of uncreate. Nobody has created God and nobody has created the individual soul or souls. Respectively, they are, God is all-knowing and the individual soul is non-knowing. God is almighty, all-powerful and the individual soul is powerless. There is another entity called Maya. That too is birthless, uncreate. Nobody has created. So we have two. One is God, uncreate. One is one of the individual souls that are uncreated. And we have a third entity called Maya. Okay. <laughs> so all uncreated. So this Maya is employed for bringing into being Three things, the, I, the enjoyer or the experiencer, the experience as well as the things experienced, the Atman, the self is infinite since it has a universe as its appearance, it is a non-agent, it does not say I, I, I. But in, Reality happens like that. I, 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 I. One becomes liberated when one knows the three as this Brahman, this try, this experiencer, the thing experienced, and here. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> like to sit down. There are there are two chairs more, and there are two chairs more. Please <laughs> sit down here because it's cold. Yeah. <laughs> you need to listen to elders. He's listening. He's just not acting. Yeah, she wants that experience. Uh, so here we have. Now this idea of Maya, it's always like, you no, know, this Maya, Maya, this Maya business is becoming so, uh, it's like, uh, we just heard, oh, it's all because of Maya. Yes, in a way, it's all because of Maya. But then in the third mantra, what we have is, uh, it's already mentioned that this power of Maya, it's called Devatma Shakti. That is the power of the Lord hidden in its own, you can say, qualities. Devatma, it's the power of, of God. So, God is divine. So the his power also is divine. So it's uh, Maya is something which is divine. We have the idea that Maya is delusive and Maya is, you can say, you know, uh, gives you a kind of a wrong perception and this and that. For the for the non-knowing, for those who do not know, for those who know, everything becomes divine. So Maya, instead of becoming a horrible bad dream becomes a source of liberation, becomes a cause of liberation. Okay. So that's a, it's just a, the perception. 
no 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 let's let's uh, let's stick to what uh, upanishad talks about uh, divat shakti because here it is said uh, ajahi that there is one but the uh, uh, feminine gender is used for the unborn maya uh, so <clears throat> let's let's look at there is one entity called god that's uncreate there's the individual souls that are uncreate and then we have yeah just come to side i think uh, <laughs> yeah bring the chairs with you i yoga in other way too careful of the wire sit over there According to the non-dualist view, the universe consisting of the experiencer and the experience and the thing experienced, if it has, they say, if it has reality, then such things as the supreme Lord is all powerful, page eighty-two, and the soul is powerless. the supreme lord is omniscient the soul has limited knowledge the supreme lord can accomplish everything the soul cannot the supreme lord is a nourisher of all and the soul is a nourisher of its body the supreme lord is omnipresent the soul is not the supreme lord is possessed of all splendor and is self contented and the soul has limited splendor and is not self content so if it if it is if maya is real then these divisions also make sense how how can you have this one infinite reality fragmented into all these kind of realities there are innumerable souls and then we have something called the supreme soul god the vedantist would say why why you do you think this is one category and this is one category it's not two categories it is a supreme soul that appears as a fragmented and what are the fragments these are the individual souls you got this point so uh, because what happened like yes we, this is one and this is another one don't don't make that mistake now what creates these divisions or fragmentations it's the power of god as we have said it is devatma shakti swagunay nikad the third mantra is very clear that this fragmentation is an kind of an appearance it is not real otherwise you will have two entities which are real one is god and one is the individual soul which in duality we know that yes god creates the universe god created this universe and and he created every one of us and then he is not doing anything about it <laughs> sometimes intervenes <laughs> like when you pray oh he intervened in my favor oh yes there are philosophers especially i think it was if i'm not mistaken lock john lock he says yes miracles means there's a suspension of natural laws and it always happens like it's happening in your favor only <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, this is what uh, we need to understand that there is that reality there one reality where it's appearing as diverse it's appearing as multiple and due to this fragmentation we and uh, now we have one problem first we say that this power that has fragmented that supreme soul is unreal vedanta says it's ultimately it's unreal but is it like a kind of a dream no because it has produced all these things the vedantist what they do is they escape this conundrum by saying it is neither real no unreal no is a mixture of both real and unreal there then what is it it's indefinable <laughs> so yes you try to define it it is it escapes all definitions it transcends all definitions it has some reality because it has produced this thing it's produced individualities everything is a kind of an individualistic uh, you can say uh, being you know? adrija is different from me and i am different from her we are all different not too bad <laughs> <laughs> too bad <laughs> but it's just temporary <laughs> it's temporary it's only an appearance yes. <laughs> yes it's on the surface on the surface what happens is we appear as if separate but in the depths of our being we are one and that is what we got to realize and that is what the mantras have been saying te dhyana yogena anupashyan they did they, they realize this through profound meditation so yesterday i those who were there for yesterday's class i was saying there are these two you can say characteristics of the human mind one is to circle outwards circle forward and one is to circle inwards so there's a kind of a constant tussle between the two depends on time persons you can say state of mind or social society state of mind uh, one dominates and is generally the pravritti that going circling out dominates but there is also that thin small voice no it makes you recoil and this when it is pronounced it will take you inside is this a power of the mind and the power of the liberty yes yes okay because these two powers of the mind push it out and even pulls it in so uh, they did that through deep contemplation and it goes inside and this power is in all minds so so the universe is the interplay of all these things it's like you no know, take for example a person uh, who's been active and then slowly suppose suppose uh that person is getting old now the reality that he impinges on these things have become reduced now he thinks about his old mother and father you know saying he dreams about his grandfather the grandmother the something like that these things now becoming a more and more now real to that person the external world yeah, it's there it's like that person is ready for his for his or her journey 
back inwards, back towards it. So what reality that you are giving all these things is now slowly getting reduced. It's coming down, back, back down inside. And years is it that we, when we keep on going inside, we can realize that it is this Devatma Shakti. That's the power of God. So, God is uncreate. So, His power also is uncreated. And the individual souls, obviously, they are uncreated. Now, these individual souls, these individual souls are as you must, there's a fundamental difference between the power. This is Ishwara, the sum total of all souls, and it is his power that has fragmented all these things. The soul also finally is a kind of an appearance. The individual soul also is a kind of an appearance. There is actually the highest teaching of Vedanta is. Jiva Brahmaivanapara. The individual soul is nothing but that supreme soul. So it is not just this appearance of individualities. It's the individual souls. They are also finally, they are found to be an appearance. So what is actually real then? What is real is that supreme soul. Okay. Now when this person, he keeps on, he or she, sorry, I'm using this, as uh, the person keeps on giving up these external things. Like suppose you've got a kind of a pain in the leg and somebody says, come on, let's go for a movie. I'm not interested in a movie. If you're dragged to the movie, your mind will be on that pain. You won't enjoy that movie. Well, you you got something more closer at home to bother about than somebody is weeping and wailing there. Somebody is getting killed. I'm getting killed here. <laughs> so yeah, you you are transferring that, and it's very important because Swami Vivekananda says that. We are like fools. We give things life. And like fools, we either enjoy them or are dissuaded by them or they frighten us. It's we actually give life to things. It is our prana. It is our mind. So as we keep on withdrawing, getting into that nivritti, getting back, these things appear just as they are there. This table is there, this chair is there, the books are there, and this and that and that. But my my mind is now concentrated <coughs> on my pain. It's just a kind of an appearance. The world in our experiences appears as a kind of an just an appearance. That is what Vedanta says that you don't have to go too far out for you know trying to understand Vedanta. It's your daily experiences. It's your life experiences that gives you all these things. So, now when this person understands the three things, that is the experiencer, the experience and the object experienced, what happens? He or she the individual okay, will realize that reality. Why it will experience that reality? Obviously, because he's saying, Anantascha Atma Vishwarupa Hyakarta. Because this Atman, the, the, the individual is there, which is an appearance. Behind that individual is that reality, which is infinite. And it is a non-agent. That is, there it does not say, I, I, I. Like in a state of deep sleep, you don't say, I, I, I. So there you are. In the states of soon, the states of, 
the deepest meditation, you don't say I. In the states of deep, very deep meditation, what happens? This word samadhi is being thrown about here and there, just a kind of a kind of casual thing. In the state of samadhi, what happens is the body dies, the mind dies. So there is no I in that body. There is no sense of individuality in that body. The body dies. Or it's in a kind of advanced state of hibernation. But internally, what do you experience? That infinite reality. So people say, I'm going to Samadhi. Oh, yeah, really? You want to die? <laughs> if you are prepared to die, then you come and have Samadhi. And if you do not descend from that Samadhi in 21 days, as Sri Ramakrishna says, the body the, and the mind and all wither away and fall off like a kind of a dry leaf. And that real experience finds that behind me is that, oh, I'm the reality. Now, why should I bother for experience? Why should I bother for appearances now? Why should I bother about chocolates <laughs> anymore? Hmm? No, no, uh, a, a stupid thing can hold us down. And it does. If you just analyze some of our experiences, you'll find that some of things, these things are real stupid. I shouldn't have been held down because of this. Why am I being held down? It's okay. There are more shares left. So pretty was right. Also. She knew it. She saw it coming. She's like a sage. Yeah, <laughs> sitting there silently watching the Srikal Garashi. And this is what happens. That the last uh, line in, in the mantra is when one knows the three, the three that is the experience, the experiencer, and the thing experienced. When he knows the three as a kind of an appearance, okay, then that person becomes liberated. The liberation in the sense, how is it mentioned? Vindate Brahma method. That individual experiences that reality as Brahman, beyond all appearances. It's like, you know, God is the collective and we are parts of that collective, like the body. And we are like the individual cells in that body. So when that individual cell in suddenly realize, oh, I'm part of the collective. Huh? I'm, part. Yeah, I'm part of the God's body. What made me think I'm separate? What made me think? Yeah, so this is where this thing comes, that kind of a veil comes and tries to, and blocks your vision. You have the sun, it's a huge, you can see this, huge, but a small cloud comes and Oh, it's a cloudy today. The sun, we don't see. The sun is not affected by your clouds. And a small patch of cloud hides that huge sun. Why? Because <laughs> that, that patch of cloud is closer to us. So that's why when ignorance is too close to us, I and mine, this is me and this is mine. And the worst is, this is my body. And this is my mind. This is my thoughts. I have a right to it. Oh, really? <laughs> and God, the collective, he must be looking at that and saying, see that fool. <laughs> because he is all-knowing. He is omniscient. I say, anyway, 
it's not going to harm me if a person says i am an angel one of us say i am an angel all of us look at that person and say yeah <laughs> <laughs> then, then it starts saying it all yeah. yeah. so <laughs> you know, the guy he needs some treatment <laughs> he needs to see some you know i just saw a teacher says 90% angel ah yeah so there it is all percentages also are come inside the picture so uh, it's like that god will see i am surprised i am this i am that and yeah, he'll wake up one day and that's what it is so when does that soul wake up there the process is you had enough of this rubbish running about number 1 number 2 is you were glad you were born and you feel now that this is within my grasp thirdly you come in touch with a teacher and then there you are now it's up to you now you plod on close it because you have to unmake what you have made this house of delusion that you have created so only you who know what it is and you can cut out it so how do we go on uh, dismantling this house of delusion the bhagavad gita is saying don't go out don't waste your time get to the root and there you'll find that root that sense of i i i cut it up asanga shastre na dhade na chitva with the with the stout sword of knowledge with the no or stout sword of non attachment cut at this root otherwise you'll keep on dismantling the the top floors and the 10th floors and 11th floors and 12th floors it'll be so just cut it how do we cut it you just need to replace that i with the i of god whenever you say i know that it is god who is speaking to that i and there you are slowly 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 na ham na ham to it not me not me you all our spiritual disciplines everything is just to cut at this root we are like fools trying to catch these branches and leaves and count tree uh, count the mangoes or apples or whatever by leaving that those roots alive you start hacking at those and then we drop down this tree so the next mantra 10th is i'll read the sanskrit and i'll read it in the translation sharam pradanam amritam aksharam hara shara atmani vikshate deva ek tasya vidhyana yojana tatva bhava bhuyash anya vishva maya nivritti yeah okay it's it it means the same thing uh the translation on page 85 we on page 85 is nature is mutable the supreme lord the supreme god is immortal and immutable the one deity rules the mutable and the soul i'll will explain it and from repeated meditation on him that is on that supreme reality union with and contemplation on reality there comes about an end the cessation of maya in the form of the universe so here we are we have to like you know, reverse now nature is mutable nature the word uses pradhanam pradhan this is actually the first pradhanam in the first of the chief 
it is from there that everything evolved in this is a uh, in one of the philosophies the six systems of philosophy the sankhya system talks about uh, pradhana as maya or as you can say nature prakriti so this nature first kind of evolves like milk curdling you know and then the milk where does the curds come from the milk okay the curd and then it keeps on transforming itself more and more and into cheese and into butter and into various other things you can even think of all the things you can so there's the first evolute called pradhan and that mutates keeps on changing itself this is that's what that's why it's called nature is mutable this thing you obviously we don't like to see the same thing over and over again uh, you don't like to have the same type of food over and over again you feel sick so nature has given us some variety it's like you no know, some uh, one when i when i was young i have just been given one mantra <laughs> one senior swami thing <clears throat> just one mantra and i have just got to do that and we are laughing and laughing and could have had multiple mantras but then another a senior swami says you have that one but there are different levels of that mantra you think it's one it's not one different levels so as you keep on repeating <clears throat> the mantra you as it were plumb your own depths okay gradually 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 you get more and more powerful more and more powerful so nature also is bored at times let's inspire this person a little and it will bring things in front of you then you say i've seen this you get another thing oh this is interesting after a while you say ah i'm not interested anymore then you get to your third thing and keep on and on and on and on and on presenting to you things which will engage you so it needs to mutate itself you know constantly change its shape constantly change its kind of nature because it has to keep you engaged that is the work of maya shri ram krishna gives an example of you know um, there's a kind of huge uh, marriage ceremony and uh, the woman of the house she is running about this guest has come and that guest has come and she is uh, busy and her uh, sari that's a the cloth is uh, stained with all this vermilion and this and that and so the man is sitting there down with his pipe smoking the <laughs> hubble bubble and she comes so and so has come he said mm. and she is running out busy about taking care of things all everything so she is the one who is busy and she keeps us engaged that's that's the idea because the soul wants that those experiences i want something new i want something new or oh, you want to... you know you know how mothers are the child is fed up with all those toys i want something new i see no those, those toys on amazon huh? what is this so you get another toy and that child and then i want something more there 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 and all these things are like kind of toys the nature presents to us keep yourself engaged keep yourself engaged and one point of time i don't want any toys i'm fed up with all this playing about then shri ram krishna says that mother will let you shout a little she won't come immediately then she'll keep everything away okay. aside and she come and lift you up come there you are safe so you need to do a little hollering you need to do a little shouting for god so 
shout for God. Of course, not loudly. <laughs> Inside. There's, and in the life of Sri Ramakrishna, we've seen how just yearning for God gave him the first vision of Kali. So we need to hanker, we need to yearn for God, the reality. And there you get it. Is this is the only condition. Later on, you will have, oh, we'll have this mantra, we'll have this meditation, and we'll have this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you don't have that hankering, that's a kind of an engine that pushes all these things. So some time back, I was uh, talking to somebody, and then uh, not here in, uh, in uh, Santa Barbara. I think so many years you're doing, nothing is happening. There, you're not, you know, really hankering for that. You're taking your time. God will say, it's okay. You also take your time. I'll take my time. <laughs> so this nature, sharam, is, this is pradana, this nature is mutable. Okay. And the other side of immutability is the Lord. Here, the Lord is, uh, you can say, designated as Hara. Not as Shiva, really. But Hara means one who, you can say, removes the delusion. Haranti. So is Hara. And what is this immutable one? Immortal. God is immortal and he is immutable. Akshara. So here we have. Like again, I said, uh, don't get uh, deluded with those two divisions. This is one and that is one. The one deity rules the mutable and the soul. There it is. You need to have a uh, rules in the sense of like, yeah, I say this and you jump up and do this. It's not like that. Uh, certain powers have been given to the individual. The individual is capable of thinking for itself, doing things. This thing has been designed by whom? By one of us. We certainly have the power of creating these things or remodeling these things. From the mutable, you can say, material. We take sand or you take the, you can say, motor or cement and we take stones and we have this and and we fashion all these things. So, it is not just, we are just powerless. We have a degree of power and that has been given to each and every one so that that individual can do things for Instead of blaming me, we have, oh, it's all Maya's fault. No, it's all God's fault. No. Vedanta says, you cannot blame anything outside of yourself. Don't. First thing is, take the blame on your shoulders. I am responsible for this blow that has come. If I see the sequence of the events which has led me to the blow. Oh my God. Ah. Ah. I did that. Now the blow has come. I don't know where. But now I know where it has come. So, first thing is, there. You've got to take responsibility for your actions. Once you understand this, then you have the power to correct yourself. So, the Supreme Lord, he rules over nature and individual soul. Does not mean he's standing with a rod. You make a mistake and I'm going to hit you. It's not like that. You make a mistake, you suffer. I make a mistake, I suffer. He's not there with that. Standing with that. That's called the law of karma. Do this. Every action is an opposite and equal reaction. It goes and comes there too. So here we have this one deity who rules everything. 
you know, uh, you know what happens is this ruler, as they say, of Maya and the Indian so has a very tough job, you know. Rulership means I have done something and uh, the results will come to me. Number one. He does something and the results will go to him. Our results will not mix. In case I do a lot of meditation and the fruits go to him. <laughs> and Pradeep does a little more meditation and the fruits come to me. And that's going to create a chaos. The whole mechanism of this universe will fall apart. So from this you can understand rulership means that ruler gives you what you have worked for. And it also means he is omniscient or he or she, she rather is, she is omniscient. Because what I have thought in the depths of my mind, only I know. And that also God knows. It's not in the God knows. Yeah, actually God knows. That means he's, he or she is also inside me as well as outside. Here we have somebody who is watching you. Imagine somebody is keeping on continuously watching you. What will you do? God, first thing you do is take care of your actions and take care of your thoughts and take care of your words. Uh, God is scanning me for all the viruses. Mm, better be careful. Better be careful. Be careful. Technically, it should have been like that. You don't have created all this mess that we have. Uh, but we forget. And this forgetting is... So when you're talking about a rulership, rulership means this. That person has done this. She has given it. Nothing more, nothing less. It give you shouting. I, I've done more than this. What have, what have you got? All these tatters and rubbish. You know, you've done exactly this. And you that is rulership. Okay. It's a karma faldata. He is a, she or she is a giver of the fruits of action. Secondly, as the Upanishad says, he, she is a nourisher. So here we have Bharate, that is the word you even, she is a nourisher. She keeps everything alive and well. So this is the, that one supreme being. The one deity rules the mutable and the soul. Yeah. It's a, it's a, the mutable is under the power of God. Because suppose I want to lift my hand up. What happens? I lift my hand up. Yeah. So I lift my hand up. So this hand is under my power as long as it's my hand. Okay. So God also, this whole of this appearance is under his rulership. So what happens is he wants to take things out, take things out, bring things in, bring things in. So it is totally under the power of God. It is the power of God itself. It's like I'm lifting my hand up. So the power of God is under God's control. It is like a, a, a part of his body. As we have been talking about, the kind of a limiting adjunct to body that is uh, just there, part of you. Like if you keep quiet, you say that you are a combination of the mind and body. Right now, we feel your mind and body. Little We go a little deeper and we think, yeah, I am a kind of a soul associated with the mind. There's always a dual feeling. It's only in the stage of Advaita, that's the highest realization, where you feel this world appearance has disappeared, appearance has disappeared, and along with that, my individuality. But till we have a body, 
we have a kind of a dual feeling. I am a body and yes, I have a mind. So where is your mind? Somewhere within. I feel my mind. I feel joy and I feel we can say it can happen. So similarly, God also, that universal soul, also has a kind of a dual feeling. I am, yet I have this also. Okay. What do you, what do you mean by that? I am the universe is great. I am, and I'm also this. Also. The God also knows that uh, I am God, obviously, okay. and this nature also is is, is my limiting edge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So it's like that. So when I close my eyes, you know, I feel my body. Yeah, this is part of me. This is me, in a way. So similarly, God does not need to close the eyes like this. <laughs> I feel that this is me. That's why this whole universe is the body of God. Here we are. Then, the... Upanishad talks about and from the repeated meditation on that reality union with and contemplation on the reality there comes about an end of speaking. So later on we will find another the the one deity what's the best way to you can say free yourself from this individuality Meditating on universality. When you keep on thinking, I am an individual, uh, that's a kind of prison. Suppose you keep on saying, I am the universal. You replace that universal with God, theistically speaking. And yes. And you keep on thinking about it. You know, Swami Vivekananda once, uh, it, during a lecture year in the US, he suddenly stops and says, puts his hand there, I am God. <gasps> what? What blasphemous can you, anybody can get? But that's what, that was what the, uh, is the reality. You come down to where I am the universal. There. This is the highest state of a person which can be experienced while in the body. Swami Shardananda, uh, Vivekananda's brother disciple. Uh, so, his guru, Ramakrishna, said, what do you, what do you like? To experience? I want to see that one reality pervading everything. Sarva Bhute Brahma Darshan. In all beings, seeing that Brahman reality in all beings. So, Ramakrishna says, oh, but that's a final word in spirituality. I want that, nothing less. Ram Krishna was pleased. And that's what later on he attained. So, this prison house of individuality will one day melt away and then we'll see ourselves as universal. universal. The problem comes is... So I have a question. Yes, no, the question uh, is, yeah. No, just like, it's a language question. Mm -hmm. Universal or I am universal? You can use it both ways. I am the world. I am the universe. Yes. The, the whole universe is my body. That's a time when you become identified. You don't remain. The the Lord is in your place. Uh, here it is like, no, we go inside. As we keep on going inside, what happens is we see that this individual soul is also an appearance. And we go inside and we find God. Oh, I've been seeking Him. He's been hiding behind that eye. He is hiding behind that small patch of cloud. 
and then when the cloud moves, <gasps> oh yeah, <laughs> there it is, there it ends for you. For the rest of us, we keep on going. But there will come a time when every one of us. That's what the scriptures say. That liberation is the birthright of everyone. Everyone will be liberated. Ramakrishna says, some will be fed in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the evening, some at night. Nobody goes hungry in this Annapurna's Anda, that is the mother's, you can say, storehouse, kitchen. Nobody goes hungry. So no soul is ever left. There's no eternal damnation. There's only ah, eternal liberation. We, we, we don't say, this. how can a soul be damned? There cannot be any damnation. Because it's by nature divine. That's what the Bhagavad Gita, Daivi Eshagunamai. This is this is appearance also is a is a form of divinity. It's not delusion. It's not we that's that's the reason why we we have not bought in any kind of other entity called a Satan. We would have bought in a Satan. That's a nice that's a nice guy who creates all the trouble. <laughs> According he makes God's work easy. Hmm. Huh. He, uh, he tempts you, takes you back to his place where he stays and he, to be eternally fried. <laughs> and so God says, yeah, I'm fine. Oh, God. You're make, making me work light. Take, take him away. Yeah. But uh, we don't have all these Satans and this and that. There's, everything is divine. You are divine. This universe is divine and God obviously is divine. Let's take it. So everything is nice. Just, <laughs> uh, just open the eyes. And that's the reason why they say, do not see God. See God. This is what it is. Vedanta says, clear, clear your vision. And then, as we say, how do I do that? I've given you the, you can say, upaya or the the conditions necessary for doing that. Uh, the thing that really actually stops us is giving up our individuality. That is what bothers. Can't I have this and this together? Can't I keep my personality, my individuality and also this? No, you cannot do that. You cannot do that. We'll have to give it up. No. So we want both the things. You have to give up. It's like that Samadhi business. You want to be alive and yet you want to be in Samadhi. No. You've got to die first for that Samadhi. So here we are. We take ourselves away and see the our reality. So finally we come down to this. So this is a repeated meditation on that reality. And always, you know, we always think that I am alone and it's, there's no one who loves me. So we never, never think like that. I can't understand why people feel lonely or alone or this and that. You are always joined to God. You are always on with that reality. You are always that. You are always one with that whole universe. How can you think of yourself as lonely, alone, or this and that? You cannot. One should not. And then the heart expands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is what the whole thing was. So the more you expand, and all ethics and all morality is nothing but to break this kind of small feeling about you, go out. There's no other, you can say, utility. Why should I be moral? Because <laughs> your heart grows large. You can feel other people's pain. 
you can feel other people distress you can feel other people think also so i'm emerging out of my individuality this is the process that it does not say drop this whole individuality now and then no you cannot frighten babies and start weeping so <coughs> they're doing it slowly so do it like this then after that, then you say now you meditate and then you keep on meditating and you uh, you find yourself you are one always one with that and uh, thinking about the reality what what happens is in many cases no uh, we see that uh, god is kind of distant to us right now this world is so near my body is near but if i can replace it god is the reality and there you are and this whole thing is an appearance so we just need to change this idea of reality what we are giving it to the world we need to put it on god this is the meaning of tattva bhava the, the upanishads talk about this like if you keep on meditating on reality when you meditate on ram krishna or kali or shiva or durga or whatever right now it appears kind of a hazy unreal sometimes the the image of ram krishna runs away and disappears and i'm looking at myself in the mirror and then what am i doing i'm supposed to meditate on ram krishna <clears throat> if you start with the idea that these forms are real then what happens your, your meditation will be on the reality it is not just a kind of a figment of your imagination or something somebody has said you should meditate on this no slowly you find that the ideas of reality as you keep on getting more and more closer to it's like this i have this notebook if i keep on thinking of it this thing becomes precious to me it becomes real to me i'll dream about it i think about it <laughs> oh yes after some time there it is so uh, meditation precedes what this idea that we this god is not just a concept god is not just in a book god is not just in lectures and somebody is talking on sermons god is real and for now this is the form of that god either durga or shiva or kali or ramkrishna or vivekananda or holy mother this has to be one of those many yes one because no need uh, no point in like ram krishna say digging a well finding no water here going to another place digging there for water and you are left with the place full of holes so yes. you dig in one place till you find the water keep so, on digging and digging like the ishta should be your main focus ishta should be main focus okay. so and all forms of gods and goddesses are parts of that ishta yes yeah. so then slowly slowly and it actually it does break for a fraction of a second it breaks and then it comes back again that's the problem yeah. ram krishna gives a kind of a uh, there's a scum that covers the you know, water in a pond you push that scum okay and then after a while the scum comes dancing back in and covers it that's what we in our meditation prayers and all we say push it away ah, i am that divine being i am the reality and then after meditation or after prayer and then and there it comes back where's my cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> just now you are talking about thank you how did you <laughs> but constantly doing it what happens like you know 
this world will appear like kind of a distant. New York right now is very far away. If we go to New York, then it's a different thing. But right now, it's, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, something is happening in Afghanistan. What will happen? So things become distinct. Likewise, as you live your life, a part of your mind is with that mantra or that meditation on the deity. It's engaged there. And the, everything else will kind of look like a kind of an appearance show. Things will come and go away. Things will come and go away. You just have let go of it. So, we, we will take the uh, mantra, uh, the commentary the next time, but then we can give you the gist as well. Page 85. 85. 85. Okay. Yeah, constant meditation. I think we've, we've covered this question. Which mantra are you on? Uh, tenth. We tenth. finished the tenth. No. First chapter. Yeah. First chapter. Okay. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tasat Sri Ram Krishna 